there. My name is Mary Ferguson. I'm from the Birches Assisted Living in Clarendon Hills. And my friend Patty Turkovich, who you'll meet very shortly, is from Aspired Living in Westmont, also assisted living in memory care. We are here as part of the Dementia Friendly Westmont, Dementia Friendly series here at the Westmont Public Library. Dementia Friendly Westmont, and you have one of these uh, flyers if you did actually pick up one of our kits, is a resource guide. Uh, Dementia Friendly is a grassroots movement um, that towns work together with their local businesses, their local uh, residents uh, to make it more dementia friendly. And so the idea really is to have education, resources, and support for those living in the Westmont area um, that have dementia or their care partners. So the resource guide um, has some great uh, References, if you need support, you're looking for adult daycare, if you're looking for a support group, or just a place to turn where you just need some questions answered, the resource guide is very helpful. Um, also in the kit, if you did pick that up, um, my business card and Patty's business card are in there, and we're more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, also um, in the resource guide, there is a Dementia Friendly Westmont email, so if you want to send a quick email with some questions, we'll be happy to answer that as well. Um, part of Dementia Friendly Westmont, um, we talked about education, and here at the Westmont Public Library, they've been a wonderful resource and host for us to talk about Dementia Friendly. Uh, and again, this particular uh, video that we're doing today is um, together time making memorable moments. Um, our goal really here is to encourage and maybe spark some interest in different activities that you can do uh, with your loved one with uh, cognitive impairment, um, whether it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, whether you pull in friends or families to also support you. Uh, and, and again, to have some nice uh, laughs, have a great time with that a loved one of yours. So today, um, you know, every month we have a theme. So July, it's it's summer and it's a little bit warmer. So we're going to talk about a, a day at the beach. Now, whether you have the opportunity to actually head to a beach, that would be wonderful. But if not, we're also going to share some ideas on how to have a beach at home, whether that's in the backyard, whether that's at your kitchen table, but certainly ways to engage your loved one. So you can and certainly uh, remember what it was like to spend a day, a hot summer day, at the beach. So we'll be doing that. Um, a couple of things that we also want to make sure that you remember if you are going to be outside um, these hot months is hydration. Hydration is a big thing. So always want to have water or iced tea, lemonade, whatever is going to quench your thirst. But certainly it's really important to stay hydrated. So always have your bottle of water. Um, again, if you're going to be outside, your sunglasses. We always have our favorite sunglasses that we like to wear. So I have these and Patty has her different ones. Maybe she'll put those on for you too. Um, as well as sunscreen, we want to make sure that uh, you know, as, as important it is to have the sun on your skin, um, get that vitamin D going, get the serotonin uh, moving for your brain. Um, it's very important though to make sure that you do wear sunscreen. Um, it's easily uh, burned, our skin, as much as we'd love to get that summer glow, uh, we want to make sure that we are protected. So please make sure that you're wearing your sunscreen, um, especially if you're going to spend um, your uh, beach at a beach, uh, which would be wonderful. So again, we're going to talk about our virtual beach today. We have some wonderful props here that you'll get to see how we're going to be using those. Um, but at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Patty and she's going to kind of go into her little spiel. And again, maybe she'll uh, have her sunglasses on for you. So thanks for joining us and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Mary. I love my sunglasses. I love the fact that you can cover up your eyes, protect your eye health, and enjoy everything in the true colors of what's out there in nature. Um, so, day at the beach, I was very excited when we decided on this theme. I even have my beach bracelet that has all sorts of fun charms reminiscent of the beach. I've got snails and crabs and sea castles and dolphins and whales on here. Got very excited. We decided to kind of not do the whole thing with the beach hats and the sundresses because we do have to get back to the office. So, 
Anyhow, as we continue on, as Mary said, the whole theme for the day is a day at the beach. And one of the things that we always think about is the bright colors when you're at the ocean side or lake side. When you are there, there is so much stimuli from the feel and sound of the air blowing, the, if you're near palm trees or just trees or grasses along the shore of Lake Michigan, that rustling sound, all of that is heightening our senses, just as if we're sitting outside in our backyard. So one of the things that I wanted to do today is one of my favorites is a beach ball. When we get a beach ball, it is so classic of what we think of in terms of something you would have or expect to see at the beach. The bright colors, you know, you've got your blue, red, orange, yellow, green, and white. The fact that you can hold this and twirl it around by motor skill. So this would be something that you could do with your loved one is have them just hold it and play with it. You naturally start tossing a ball like this from hand to hand even is going to give you some mild movement, which is a nice way to start out. And it's really amazing the simple things that come about with the beach ball that actually are really good exercises that will help our bodies stay flexible, keep the brain exercising, and overall make us feel good and bring about joy. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate. So you can start by just tossing the ball up in the air and hopefully you have good control over it. And the beauty of this and the size that we went with is it's nice and small, but this will allow your loved one and for you to be able to make sure nothing's going to be damaged in case you are inside doing this. It's a rainy day at the beach, so you're inside or if you're outside. So that way, again, the wind may catch it, but it's small enough and quick enough that you can grab it. So it seems like a very simple thing, but you're talking hand-eye coordination, you're talking fine motor skills, gross motor skills, as well as it's fun and it's colorful. Some other variations of what you can do with this, and I'm going to ask Mary to come over here in a few minutes, but we also know that when you're looking to get some exercise, depending on what stage your loved one is, you might actually be better served at having them sitting down and always take that into account. What is the best safety approach here? Um, but pushing with your fists, again, pulling it back and pushing it back, back and forth, that again is getting more exercise in and that's helping to expand the lungs, it's helping to expand air and when we get air into our body the deeper we're breathing the more oxygen fresh oxygen that we're getting in our brain is feeding on that and it needs it so something this simple can become a really good activity because it's easy it's fun it's playful and essentially it's making exercise fun if you're seated and again your loved one maybe doesn't have as safe a mobility as you would like them to you could actually put this on the floor and let them kick it back and forth to you with their feet and that way if it goes off course that's okay you can go get it but it's getting that leg movement and it's done in a fun playful way and that again makes exercise fun when you are also going back to this tossing I really love, there's a game, and you can actually even buy beach balls out there that have this on there, but you can write on the beach ball cognitive questions, something like name a spice, um, identify a state, um, what's your favorite color, did you have a pet, and when you catch the ball, if your hand lands on one of those questions, you then read it and then you answer it. So it becomes a much more engaging activity. It's a cognitive activity. So again, something very simple, a beach ball, not only good exercise, creating fun, it can also stimulate and bring back fond memories of the beach. So much of what we do, and you hear this every month when we do these programs, it's not rocket science, any of it. It's really boiling down to being in the moment and enjoying whatever activity is that you're doing. You know, whether you're playing with a beach ball or any of the other things that we're going to be showing you today or any of the activities that we've shared with you previously, all of this is about being in the moment and really focusing on that individual. So what we will encourage you to do, again, when you're doing this, if you have several people in the room and you're tossing the ball, catching it, 
tossing, catching. All of that is getting that upper body exercise, getting that movement going, and we want to make sure that we're doing that because if not, the more sedentary we become, and many of us can identify with this after the year of COVID, but the more sedentary we become, the less muscle mass we have. And the less muscle mass we have, the less strength we have, our core starts to sag, and we become a greater fall risk. So again, you may be looking at this thinking, are you seriously a beach ball? But at the end of the day, if it helps get the body moving and see how high you can throw it, you can see tossing it back and forth, up and down, side to side. You know, how long can you do this? Make it into a game and make it fun. You know, when you miss, it's not an unfortunate thing. It should be something joyful because it's funny and that's what entertains us. Uh, when you have a person, and this is anyone, you know, if you make something into a crisis of, oh, too bad you lose, then it's a sad thing. But if you drop the ball and you make it funny, then that's the funny part of it. And it creates that joyful moment out of something that traditionally most people would look as a negative. The other things that you can do with the beach ball is you can sit there and where's the person at cognitively, identifying the colors, talking about colors. The other thing that I enjoy doing is when you have this, if you have a person who has visual impairment, and we know in the past we've encountered some folks who share that with us, what you can do is let them describe the colors to them and ask them. So when you think of yellow, what comes to mind? You know, name an object with yellow. And you can do this with anybody, but it's something that you could do to further engage a person with vision impairment. Um, think of something, tell me something that's the color green, something the color blue. Simple little things, but teasing it out, creating conversation, getting people to reminisce. You know, did you ever have a beach ball at the beach? Well, for those of us who have, we quickly found how it could become quite a pain in the butt as you're chasing down the beach when the wind takes it and off it goes. Or my other favorite is someone throws it and it gets out into the ocean and next thing you know, it's sailing across the universe. So it creates moments of conversation that typically you may not encounter. And it's just another opportunity to engage and be in that moment with your loved one. We always talk about this too. This is something that that friend, that neighbor, that relative that doesn't know what to do, this is something that they can do in spending time together. And I think as we lead everyone back to the conversation of it's not what to do because they have memory impairment, it's what to do to spend time in a meaningful way. We can always do anything that's always been something they've been passionate about. It's all about adjusting and adapting to where they are cognitively. And if it means that you can't go to the beach, then you bring the beach to them. Um, sidebar, I have seen people take just big pans of water or a low shallow pot and put water on the table and have people put their hands in just to splash about. We see that with young children, water therapy and sand therapy, that is another way to recreate with that water therapy, getting their hands in there. And I've even seen people with very advanced arthritis and very advanced stages of dementia with their hands being the water, slowly starting to stroke the water and letting it pour through their hands. And next thing you know, they have greater movement in their hands as well. So create opportunities. You can get a blow up little baby pool maybe and fill it with water and have their feet in it just to add another level. Don't be surprised though if they say it gets cold real fast for them, but again just to kind of simulate that feel. With the colorful beach ball that we gave you and we purposely chose the bright colors instead of pastel because it's better for the vision, it's better stimulation. Watching it twirl, commenting on what you're seeing when things are throwing, not only helps a person with memory impairment, but it will help a person who has low vision. Um, I think I'm coming towards the end of my fun with a beach ball, um, but I do encourage you to do this. And the other last piece of this is blowing it up. Um, this is a really good exercise for lungs and we've all done it. And I had said to Mary when I pulled this out and started to blow it up, I actually thought about bringing my air pump, but I thought that was pretty pathetic for this size ball. So I didn't, but blowing up this beach ball helps expand the lungs, 
get more air into the body, exchange all that air that's not necessarily pumping out quickly, get fresh air in, healthy fresh air feeds the brain. So even something as simple as blowing this up to start with is a great exercise. And as I touched on earlier, don't be afraid to write on the ball. You know, come up with a list of 10 questions that you can scatter around the ball and when someone catches it and they look at it and the question is name a favorite spice, cinnamon, you know, whatever comes to mind. And the beauty is there's really no right or wrong answers for most things. And if somebody does come up with something, you just say, interesting, I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, if somebody can't think of something, that's when you can create and tease out the conversation. Something leading like, you know, I've always loved that cinnamon crumb coffee cake that you made. What do you think of cinnamon? Do you like that? So they're getting to that question if they need that kind of guidance. So again, very adaptable. The whole approach can be from beginning stages of the disease through end of stage. And even if it just means that we put the ball on the table and we're gently pushing it back and forth, it's creating subtle movement. And the more our bodies move, the healthier for our body and our brain. So I'm gonna take my beach ball. Mary's gonna slide back on over here and she will show you our next engaging item. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, I did steal Patty's beach ball back because I, I love these. I think these are so much fun and I think Patty had some great ideas on what to do with it. Um, when she mentioned the blow up pool, the kiddie pool, um, putting your feet in. You know, the other thing is you know, beach balls are great, but so many of us sometimes have those, um, uh, what do you want to call it, the, the noodles. Um, you know, if you have some noodles, you can cut those up as well. Um, or if you keep them long and let's say you have this floating in your pool, you can use that almost as like a, a hockey stick and move this around. So you can kind of play a game a little bit of, of almost like a fishing game of let's, you know, can we touch the, the, the beach ball? If we have the, you know, nowadays you can buy at, you know, Walmart, Target, the balls that you, that soak, you right? And then you can throw, you know, my kids love to throw them at each other um, in the pool. But again, those are ones that, that will absorb water, but they'll float. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can modify if you have, if, you, if you know, you'll get a beach ball if you get a kit. Um, but if you don't and you have other things around your home that you can easily uh, put into the water um, and, and use at home would be wonderful. The other thing was Patty was talking is the different colors when she mentioned yellow. A lot of us see those floating ducks and it got me thinking about the carnival days when you have different um, ducks and you'd pick them up and you'd, you'd win something based on the number on the bottom. So you know you could even create some of your own games that way um, Again, with a blow-up pool, if you do your sink, some other things that might generate some wonderful conversation and reminiscing about days um, that you know your loved one had uh, at, at the carnival days. Uh, you know, the, the talk about the dog days of summer, um, those those warm, hot days um, when the carnival came to town. Uh, playing again, we're talking beach, and I know that, but I got a little off track. But again, it's the idea of use what's around your home, and that can really be engaging and can certainly be fun. Um, I mean, great exercise. So I am going to toss this to Patty, and I'm sure she'll do a great job of catching it. Yay, she did it. Okay. So one of the things Patty talked about, um, when we talk about sand, um, certainly you always think of sand at the beach. So in your kit, if you did get a kit, we have this kinetic sand. So this is pretty cool because as parents, we like this because it stays together a little better. So because the library has been so nice of letting us use their wonderful room, I have a little pad down that Patty brought so that we don't make a mess here. But again, sand, make a mess. I mean, seriously, it's so much fun. Um, as I say that, you know, at somebody else's house, so to speak. Um, but the kinetic sand is pretty cool because as you see, it, as it comes out of its case, it, it, it's gonna stay together. Um, and that is pretty amazing when you think about it. And most people love the idea of sand. Now, it can get hot, which we all know, but the idea is how many times when you have a, a, a cool sand where you want to kind of dig your toes in um, and kind of really feel it underneath your feet. So um, that is great um, for your brain, actually. Most of us think of, oh, you know, you're feeling it with your toes, you're feeling it with your hand, but you think of all the nerve receptors that we have in our fingers. We have 
thousands of nerve receptors that we don't even think about when we use our hands every day, but picking up sand and feeling the texture, this has to um, register with your brain of what's, what it's feeling, what it looks like. So that is great stimulation for our brain. So I know, you know, Patty had talked about having a good time, but there's all this underlying things that are happening for the brain, which are so healthy when we do some everyday um, items. And so and making sure that every part of the brain can get stimulated is one of the things Patty and I really try to work on when we come up and we uh, try to be creative with different ideas for you to do together. So with the kinetic sand, again, it kind of stays together so you don't have the big mess if you had your, your play sand. But again, if you have play sand, play. It just, it's a lot of fun. Um, but again, you look at this, it's colors, the way that it moves, and it's probably a little harder to see it. Um, but as I, as I run my fingers through it, it's very soft. Um, and it's almost mesmerizing in some ways because this sand especially is not what most folks are gonna be used to, but you can certainly push it down. Um, you can see your finger imprints on it. Um, you can certainly make impress impressions with other things. Um, and that's really, again, what we want, because the idea is have fun with this. And I think for most people, when they have sand, as you can probably notice since I took it out, I've been playing with it the whole time. It is relaxing. There's something about it, at least for myself, that I find soothing. So if when you do this, again, if you have this kit, if not, get some sand from the local store. It's pretty cheap. And kind of see what happens. Um, you could be outside, which if you have regular sand, you may want to do that as opposed to a, an indoor activity. But I would bet that if you put sand down and maybe had a little spray bottle to have some water to make it stick, if you have the regular sand, and kind of see what happens. Put other things around. Put cups, um, lids, um, anything that you can think of that you have that's lying around and, and kind of sit back and see what happens. See what you do. But I would bet that most of you are going to find this very intriguing. And again, it's very sensory related. And so you're, you're touching it, you're looking at it. You know, somebody may smell it. It's a different color. Pink's not usually what we think of sand. So someone may be wondering, what is this? Um, is it taffy? You know, again, go ahead and smell it. So excuse me as I do that. It does have a unique smell. But again, we want to look at what someone's going to be doing when they're touching it, when they're feeling it. And I could probably sit here and play with this all day. Um, but that's not why I'm here. Uh, but this goes back to the day at the beach. So we wanted to create some ideas for you um, as you are trying to have that day at the beach. This is something that really will soothe uh, most people, but you can also bring your beach inside. So if you've been outside and you've you know, played with the beach ball, you've dipped your, your feet in some water, this would might be the next logical thing you might do. Of, hey, let's go inside and we'll cool off a little bit, drink your water, and then let's let's kind of play in the sand and kind of see where that leads to. Um, you know, Patty and I talk a lot about making sure that you are enjoying the moments that you're having together. It's not just this is just an activity just to keep somebody busy. Um, it certainly is a nice way to engage, but also to kind of have those conversations. We talk a lot about, see what the reminiscing is. I look at this and for a little while I'm thinking, gosh, it reminds me of um, like cotton candy. Um, and again, at a fair that you might get. So see what someone, you know, what the conversation leads to. Um, you know, it's you can sprinkle it, you can put it in a cup. The beautiful thing about this particular sand is it cleans up really well. Um, but this would be a great activity to do with, um, someone younger, so a grandchild, a great-grandchild, because their imagination really will come alive. Um, and so see where that leads, it, you know, see what they come up with. Are they gonna make an elephant? Are they going to make a snow cone? Or are they just gonna put it in a ball? Um, the creativity can really start to come out a little bit more when you have this type of sand. Um, and for myself, and as you can see, I pretty much haven't stopped playing with this since I opened it up. But that's kind of the idea. So we really want to kind of focus on the sensory part of things. Um, the other thing too is we talk about the beach. Um, you know, talk about, I remember my husband saying that they would go camping 
for two weeks. Now I like to camp for two weeks at the beach. I don't think I could handle that. Um, and there was 10 kids. So that was quite a lot of people at the beach. But I also think too, is they had wonderful memories at the beach. So think about that for a moment of, did your loved one go to the beach? And what, where was it? Was it Indiana? Was it, did they live actually on the ocean? Did they make regular trips to the East Coast? Did they make regular trips to, you know, the Gulf? Um, and have that generate some of those conversations. Because again, this is leading to more of that, that memorable moments, those conversations that maybe have been lost for a long time can start to come back out. Um, and again, kind of go with the, the flow of things. If you know, you're finding that this is too much for them, then certainly you can move on. But I think for most people, the sand can be um, very soothing and relaxing as again, as I said, I've done this for, I don't know, 10 minutes now. Um, but with that, I think um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Patty. She is gonna talk a little bit more. And I'm gonna leave this for her because I have a feeling that Patty may just wanna play with this too. Um, and she may have her own um, information to add. So there you go. I will be back, um, but I'm gonna put this down. Otherwise I will play with, with it the rest of the afternoon, so. Thanks, Mary. Yes, the importance of tactile stimuli. Um, when Mary told me that just touching sand activates 3,000 parts of our fingers for our brain, it just underscores none of this is really silly. It might seem childlike, but the input and the connections are wonderful. Um, there is such a thing as sand therapy out there. Um, this is something where they usually use it for children, but this is also something that can benefit our folks that are dealing with memory loss. When you have that sand, just have fun with it. You know, there's no right, there's no wrong. Can you create something? Can you create a castle? I mean, that's what we did when we got to the beach. That was the first thing was, and how big a castle can you make? And can you create a moat? And yes, this is a tiny amount that we're giving you. And mostly we wanted to make sure that it was safe to have it indoors because again, there are rainy days and living up in the Chicagoland area, we have less wonderful outdoor weather than we have wonderful indoor weather we need to find things to do. So and just the mere fact that once you have this, you'll just find it going through your fingers. And regular sand, the, the part about that is that will be what you want outside warming because that's the familiar feel there. It's putting your feet into that hot sand. I personally was never a fan of that. I would look to find a cool spot to put my feet. Hence, I would have my beach chair right up by the water. Um, so anyhow, I'm gonna leave this little mound here for now because like Mary, otherwise I play with it all day long because it is a really fun, funky feel. Um, and because this stuff is designed for younger people, you don't have to worry about toxicity. So just be sure of that. Um, you just never know. And you would like to think that someone wouldn't see it and think, oh, cotton candy, or hmm, this looks like bubble gum. I wonder what it tastes like. There are different colors. So you may have um, green or blue or purple. It might be white and beige. So again, something different that you can have, that you can play with, that you can bring indoors. And yes, I'm the one that likes to have a neat worktop. So that's why I have this map that I thought to bring in. All right, so enough of the sand. Um, the next little piece, I've got the exercise ones today. Um, the next piece that we want to talk about is in your kit, you should have received a bubble wand. All right, you're probably already rolling your eyes like seriously, but believe it or not, there is a great deal of therapy that comes about from this. Um, something as simple as reminiscing, always. You know, you can reminisce about shoes, about a hair clip, throw an object on the table, and I can guarantee you, you can reminisce about it. What we love about bubbles, and Mary, I needed to open this for me. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, never mind. I got it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've often been teased about not being able to open things, and it wasn't that bad. I just started freaking because I saw these little bump outs on it, and I thought, don't tell me it's more complex than I thought. So whether or not, depending on age, this may or may not be something your loved one ever did. But the beauty of this is that we've seen it. 
and maybe we've always secretly wanted to do it, but that adult little part of our brain says, oh, that's for children. I don't buy into any of that. If it's fun, it's fun for all ages. So with bubbles, this is actually, believe it or not, again, another therapy and an exercise. A couple of reasons why. When you pull it out and you've got that little glop of bubble goo, I guess, I don't know, soap, I guess you would call it. When you pull that out, I should have learned that phrase, sorry. When you pull it out, there are two and three things that are going to happen. You're focusing again on fine motor skills. You're going to pull it out and then you're going to purse your lips. And in blowing those bubbles, and I see you can see some of them, yay. I didn't want them to go on the computer screen. So you can pop them. Again, a reaching exercise. Mary, you should probably knock those other ones out, but that's okay, they'll hit the ground soon enough. In doing that simple activity, pursing your lips and blowing helps restrict and expand our, our, our throat. And that is actually a very good exercise for our body. Think about it. What do you do on a daily basis that is really focused like that? You know, um, when you purse your lips and then when you unpurse them, that is exercising this part of our body. Again, something important as we get older, we're not doing things that would naturally do that. So finding ways to help our body do things that we used to do without even thinking about it. The other thing about this is that when I'm blowing, I'm expelling all it's sorts of, smoke it's not gonna set off any smoke detectors, Mary, they're bubbles. There's no heat here. <laughs> the things we worry about when you're in the industry. Um, by doing that, by getting a nice deep blow out that air, that is expanding the lungs and getting more oxygen again, expanding the lungs, getting fresh air in, getting more oxygen to the brain. Our brain needs oxygen. Oxygen carries, the blood carries all the nutrients to our brain that we need. So again, while it seems silly, it's really such a therapeutic activity. I could do this all day long. Um, I find it entertaining the gentle fall and glide. That slow, soft motion is something that people with memory loss will be able to enjoy and encourage. And Mary's running over to pop a bubble, just so you know. That's She's awesome. getting That's into that. Fun. See, that is where it starts to stimulate memories. Maybe you never did this before, but you were the one who bought them for the kids in the neighborhood. Um, I know at weddings, I don't know if it's still the case, but blowing bubbles became quite du jour where everyone was having bubbles because we couldn't have bird seed or bird rice or whatever out there. So we started doing that. We have teeny tiny ones, and that's something else that you can do too. And I didn't think to bring a prop, but pretty much anything that you have that has an opening where you can blow through it, you can use to dip in here and see different surface tension and also then to get different shapes. I actually have, and you can Google this, I actually have those gigantic bubbles where you literally, it's basically a rope that you're dipping in to suds, the, the soap or whatever, what do you call this stuff? Very nice. Uh, so bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> We're just gonna call it bubbles. You dip it in there and you get those 35, 40 foot bubbles. Those are awesome. I actually did that. We had a booth at the Alzheimer's Walk in Naperville a few years back. And we brought that just as a way to entertain the crowd while people were walking around. I will tell you, the awe and wonder of everyone, all ages, walking by was so fun. And I think that's part of the magic of bubbles is that it's playful, it, it stimulates the brain. It may take you back to the first time you saw Wizard of Oz and Glinda the Good Witch shows up. There are so many little things that, that something so simple can stimulate for us. Um, those big ones, the, the gigantic bubbles, it's a special, bubble base that you create, but when you are doing 30 and 40 foot bubbles, that catches everyone's attention. But this is so comforting and relaxing. It's slow, it's soft. 
And you can do this, which actually would have been better oh, for me to do. Yeah. yeah, Mary's saying outside. We're hoping we won't get in trouble. Carmen, forgive us. But they're bubbles. <laughs> um, oh, Carmen is from the library, just so you guys know. So doing this will also create, but that's giving you some additional exercise with your arms. But I really like to focus more of blowing because we want to expand those lungs and make sure they're getting in as much oxygen as possible. Use the beach ball for more of mobility. But you can do that. You know, you can make a game out of how do you want to do this. And then even look for other dish trays that you can buy where, you know, they have the really nice like five, six inch circle that you can pull up and do that. But I love this because it's expanding the lungs. It's constricting and um, opening and closing your throat, your muscles and your mouth. All of those are really important muscles. And the more that we use our body, the better off for our brain. Uh, didn't think I'd have that much to say about bubbles but it really is something fun and a great reminiscing from either when you were a kid or the children were little or the kids were, um, the grandchildren are over. And that's the beauty of something like this too, is that the grandchildren can do it with their grandparents. Um, that being said, you will have one of these wands in your kit if you picked one up. And that was the reason why we chose this. It's fun, it's outdoor, Clearly, we've done it indoors, and so I think it's good. <laughs> and that being said, and we laugh because it's funny, <laughs> and we're hoping we're not in trouble and we're invited back. <laughs> but as I said, it doesn't set off fire alarms or smoke detectors. It's just fun. It's clear that gentle, relaxing float will actually even help calm someone if they're starting to feel a little agitation. And so, or maybe even make sure that person doesn't reach that point. And this is something that you can do with visual impairment, with any kind of you know, minor impairment that you may be dealing with. Vision doesn't really need that. You may not be able to see the full spectrum of the bubbles floating and, and drifting, but it at least gets you that oxygen and the joy of doing something that is familiar, fun, and lighthearted. And like I said, it's very easy that this branches off into doing something fun and light and carefree. So that's it for the bubbles. I'm going to step aside and Mary will be right here with the very last project for the day. Thank you. So I'm back. I see Patty put my sand away, so I can't play with that anymore. Um, <laughs> there is some. Um, the bubbles, though, that was kind of fun. And actually, um, one of the things that I noticed when Patty was doing this is again, different shapes, sizes, but the color. So look at that. That's another conversation starter of the beautiful colors. And if you're outside, you know, the prism that you're going to see based on the sun, you know, cloudy, whatever it might be, a lot of fun. Um, this is kind of sticky, um, so you want to make sure that you wash your hands afterwards. But what, what also is pretty nice about these, nice size. So you can certainly, like Patty was saying, for exercise. But these are also very refillable. So you can always go in and refill these. This is a, a nice thing to have around. Um, kids love them. Adults love them. Actually, I got a kick out of watching Patty do that. So that was kind of fun. So I think as you're sitting outside, um, whether, you know, uh, you're doing this, whether you have the kids doing it, it really can be a lot of fun. Um, it's different than what someone's used to, for sure, for sure but I think it's very cool. Um, but bubbles, as Patty was saying, is wonderful to have around. Um, and the fact that you can refill them and they're pretty inexpensive is great. So these, you know, we got on Amazon, but if you're not able to get a kit, uh, you know, certainly you, I, I see these all over the store nowadays. So it's, it is kind of fun. Yeah, it is a great season. They're easily transportable in a car. Um, but if you watch anybody, whenever they do bubbles, people kind of stop and they look and they watch. And so that is kind of a fun thing. And the so, little kids will chase after the pop. Yes, the kids will chase, although I did chase after them too, to pop them. Although I was a little worried that it was going to get over the curb. So again, thank you, the library. We appreciate that. Sorry, Julia, Carmen, but um, it was fun. We had a good time. Too bad you guys couldn't see us do that. <laughs> anyway, on to the next thing. Um, again, we're try trying to stay with that beach thing. So I remember when we would go, there was always, um, we always packed our, our lunch and we always had um, our beverages and things like that. But my parents let us get 
one snack at the snack shop. Um, and so that was usually some form of ice cream or something cold. So in the kits, one of my favorites are the Freezy Pops, which are so fun and very, very colorful. Um, I don't really want, I'm gonna pull it apart. So again, hopefully it doesn't break. Um, but again, these, we all know what these are. You throw them in your freezer and you know, in no time these are frozen, you cut off the plastic and you're able to have a nice sweet treat. Um, now, again, these can be eaten very quickly, but you also don't have to freeze it completely. Um, or if these are more cumbersome, you can always cut off the top and you can put it in your own ice cube trays and you could put um, you know, popsicle sticks in those and, and make your own. Um, growing up as a kid, we always had, my mom had, I believe it was Tupperware brand, um, your own popsicles. So you could, you know, put those, if you have those, I have, I've seen them at the stores, you can create your own. Um, you know, we talked a lot about hydration, um, water especially, but not everybody wants water. Um, and sometimes, um, depending on how far along uh, the dementia might be, the, the, the taste sweet, something very sweet, um, is, is really relished because sometimes those taste buds, they have died off. And so anything that's very sweet is going to get recognized very quickly and, and enjoyed. Um, and again, we're talking about a day at the beach. So we're looking at reminiscing on what folks would have. So if you have these, um, you know, let's go, you'll get them in your kit. These are, and right now, this is the time of year you could buy 500 of these if you wanted. Um, but we really just wanted to give you guys a few, just again, it's easy to do, but you can change it up. Like I said, put it in your own ice cube trays. Um, so that's one thing that you can do. The other is, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're, that we're eating healthy. And so there's a lot of different ways now that we can do that and we can sneak some fruits and vegetables in. I know for my kids, I did that a lot or tried to when they were younger. You make you know, bread and you make a zucchini with uh, zucchini bread, but you can make smoothies. So again, your food processor, if you have your blender, but you can add spinach and you can add fruits. It's amazing some of the recipes that you can find that are gonna be more nutritious. So you can create that smoothie and you could do one of two things, certainly serve it right away, or you can freeze it. And then it becomes more of that frozen popsicle type um, ice cream bar uh, that, that, pretty, that tastes pretty good. I mean, I love spinach, but I would have never thought I would have liked it in a smoothie, but usually you can't taste it. If you throw a little you know, cinnamon, you can have almond milk. If you have somebody that does have some dietary restrictions, it's easy to make it with uh, like an almond milk, a soy milk, uh, and then you throw your, your vegetables in. You can always add protein mix if, if you're wanting to make sure that someone continues to um, gain weight or stay on you know, the status quo. So those are some easy things. Now the library, um, I'm sure has a wonderful array of some recipes, whether you stop in the library and ask or you go online to kind of be a little bit more creative and healthy. Um, we certainly like the idea of having something sweet, but there's a lot of ways to do that without having to add any more artificial uh, sweetener, but you can certainly add you know, your strawberries, your berries, uh, yogurt. Uh, you could, gosh, there's so many things now that you can add to your, um, to your smoothies to make a little bit healthier. So keep that in mind, that you can take things that you have at home and make your own, whether it's smoothie, lemonade, um, iced tea. You could even do an iced coffee. Um, I mean, to me, that sounds like heaven when it's 90 degrees outside. So really be creative on your beverages, your sweet treats um, as you're winding down the day. Because for most people, you know, again, it brings back great memories for me of being able to say, okay, we could go and I'd get the chocolate covered banana or I'd get the fudgesicle um, or those, uh, the red, white, blue uh, popsicles. Um, and then once in a while, I tried something different that, you know, I never liked. I was never a big of that strawberry shortcake. My sister always liked that one. And, oh, I tried it one time and it was awful. So I stick to things that have probably more chocolate in them. Um, but again, I, the point of me saying that is that those are wonderful memories for me that I have. So again, this is a, a, a way to bring out um, conversations, reminiscing, but you can sneak some healthy snacks in there. Um, you can sneak uh, 
the uh, like I said, the fruit, the vegetables, but keep it cold because again, if it's 90 degrees outside, that's going to be a sweet treat. So you may want to have that as you end up your day after you've cleaned up your day at the beach. Um, if you have had the opportunity to actually go to the beach, that's a great way after you've come back, you've washed off all the sand, the sunscreen, to sit down and enjoy that that final uh, way to end your day. Um, whether you've been at the beach for a half hour or you were there for a couple of hours. I always think it's a nice way to end on a sweet, you know, on a sweet deal, so to speak. Um, so for me, I think that that's kind of fun. Um, the other thing, again, if that's a little bit more work than you'd like, you can always go to the store and get the little Dixie cups. You know, they pull up the top, they have the wooden spoon still, I think, right? Yes. They still have the wooden spoon, so that's kind of fun. And if you do like ice cream in any way, shape, or form, you go to the frozen section and you can see so many different types of ice creams now. Um, if someone does, again, have it, someone who's diabetic, there are options, uh, gluten-free options. There's a lot of things for folks that um, have any dietary restrictions um, that maybe you don't want to put as much work in. You want something that's a little bit easier. But again, it's kind of a fun thing. You think of the good humor um, truck that would come through and you hear that, um, uh, the little jingle, although for those of us who have had children and you put them down for a nap and you hear that, you're, you're really not happy to hear that sound. But as a kid, um, as an adult, it's kind of fun. It, again, brings back memories that you have the ice cream man that's in town to um, give you, again, that sweet treat. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I didn't know if Patty had, she's, she's giving me her eyes. So hold on, I guess, yes? About making your own treats. That should be an activity where your loved one's involved too. So making your own treats, as Patty was saying, in case you didn't hear, uh, make sure that your loved one is involved with that. So ask what, you know, would you like strawberries or blueberries? Have them help pick that up because they're going to know what they like and don't like. And it's also, it's that interactive. It's it's the color, it's the texture, and the taste. So if they put a, a raspberry in the blender and then they eat one, fantastic. They're eating healthy fruit, whatever it might be. They may not think of spinach in there, um, and that's okay too. So you may throw that in without them knowing. However, again, like Daddy said, have them as part of that. Um, if you're going to add yogurt, have them help scoop that out of the container. Have them uh, help measure out the milk, um, whatever you might be doing. Um, if you're doing a um, <clears throat> tea and you want to add the ice, have them put the ice cubes in the cup. Have them help mix it up if you're going to add any other things to that, you know, sugar, uh, any type of sweetener. Um, even your iced coffee, if you're doing that. It's kind of fun to, to kind of make that up as you go, um, but the participation. So the idea really is doing this together. It's not, you don't want to check it off as a task, like, oh, we've done this, we've done this. It's something that you may think about, this is how you'd like to end your day, and think of all the steps that go into that and have your loved one help you do that. Um, again, it always will uh, usually ignite some type of conversation in memory, and what Patty and I talk about all the time, that's what this is for. These are just ideas for you to have these special moments that you're going to have with your loved one. I'm hoping that it'll invoke some memories, some laughter, creating some new memories so that down the road, those are some nice things that you've been able to share, um, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's as a family. So you can recreate that um, again and again. And if it was successful, you do it again. Um, enjoy it. So. For us, uh, Patty, is there anything else that you have to add? Um, so I think we'll we'll wrap up. Um, I'm going to take the bubbles away from Patty so that she can't have those, and yeah, we're going to bring the sand away. She's me. taking the sand from me. But again, I'm Mary Ferguson with Birch's Assisted Living in Clarendon Hills, and Patty Turkovich from Aspired Living in Westmont. Um, we are here again through the D Dementia Friendly Westmont series with the Public Library. Um, so thank you to uh, Westmont Library for having us do this again. This was our July episode. We will have another recorded one for August. Uh, so look for that. And then we're hoping that as things continue to move forward um, with the phases in Illinois, that we might be back in person come fall. So we'll, you know, we'll hopefully we can do that. It would be nice for those of you who have seen us video. Um, it might be nice for you to come out and we can actually meet in person. So if you have any questions, um, you can always reach out to the library. If you have any recommendations on topics or you have questions, please let us know. You can call the library. The dementia friendly um, email is on here. Patty and my cards are in the activity kits, but we always uh, like feedback. Uh, see if this is something that um, has been helpful or not. 
Um, again, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. So again, thank you so much on our behalf and stay cool um, and happy July.